Hello there and welcome back to Duke of TV. I'm Monica Gibson and joining me down the line is Stefan Schneider to discuss his outlook for the German economy. Stefan, to begin with, Germany's bonds dropped as economic outlook dampened for the demand for safety. Do you see bonds performing well over the next few months? What is your outlook? I mean, you have to see that we have a, a global reassessment of the bond market, and it has been triggered mainly by the U.S. and by the Fed's announcement uh, to taper off uh, its purchases of, uh, of bonds in the coming months. So this has had an impact on the global yield level, and bonds have been affected by that. And on top of that, I, th I think you're right. So I think it's very hard to see that we revisit the lows we have seen in the lo last few weeks or months, but on the other hand, it's almost impossible to predict, you know, how this normalization in the U.S. will really affect bond yields. So um, overall, I think the volatility will be relatively high and the tendency will be north. But in ex precise levels, it's almost impossible to say. The latest data set suggests that the bloc is out of its longest ever recession. But is this indicative of investor sentiment, would you say? Or is election fever preoccupying attention in Germany at the moment? One, yes, indeed. I mean, the Eurozone economy posted uh, its first positive growth in the second quarter after six, months, six quarters of a recession. Uh, but we have seen several uh, false dawns, so I would be a little cautious, although, I mean, there are some indications, not just the GDP numbers. Also, it seems that the labor market uh, deterioration in peripheral Europe ha has peaked, so it might be positive. And if you look at the, at the equity market as well as at the bond market, you can see that investors are buying into that to a certain extent. The German election, I don't really think that it makes a big difference. It's basically a very dull exercise, especially Especially here in, in Germany, there is hardly any election campaign, and it seems that in whatever combination, we will probably stick with Chancellor Merkel if the polls are any indication. So therefore, I think the uncertain, potential uncertainty from the German elections is pretty low. The German economy beat expectations. However, the central bank is still being cautious, saying in its latest report, but this momentum may not be upheld in the second half of the year, with growth expected to hover between 0.3 and 0.4%. Is this in line with your expectations? I mean, absolutely. Uh, the, the Bundesbank and ourselves, we are with our uh, forecast of the annual growth rates and also of the trend growth in the second half of the year pretty much in line. And one has to see uh, that uh, the 0.7 quarter on quarter increase in the second uh, quarter is to a certain extent a reflection of the very weak first quarter. There was some catching up in construction and there were some kind of uh, one off effects in, in trade. So overall, uh, especially given the still relatively sluggish international uh, backdrop, uh, I think it's fair to say that German economy will grow by around a quarter, a good quarter percent, quarter and quarter in the second half. Also in its report, the Bundesbank was doubtful whether there would be a noticeable revival in investment. What would you say are the main reasons for this? I mean, you have to see investment is, is pretty volatile and it has been weak for several quarters. And actually, and we don't have the details, but it, it, it looks like, you know, that was the first quarter for a very long time that investment actually contributed in, in machinery and equipment had a positive contribution to, to growth. Will it be sustained? I mean, it has to do, I think, with the uncertainty in the euro crisis. The eurozone is still uh, the most important export market for, for German industry, although its uh, relevance has deteriorated during the crisis, but still, if, you know, there are more signs that the eurozone overall is, is uh, reaching its nadir and bottoming out, I think that might also uh, stabilize or give some momentum to investment spending. But overall, if you look at capacity utilization, if you look at the order books, there is no need for German corporates really to go on a, a kind of spending binge with regard to investment. Stefan, thank you so much for sharing your insights today. Well, that's all from me for the moment, but click back to the website for today's press review, focusing on India's battered rupee, which plummeted to even lower levels. Goodbye for now.